Hello there. Uh, tonight I would like to uh, continue sharing some more of that chapter uh, from the book uh, Anxious for Nothing by Max Lucado. Again, it's a book that uh, deals with uh, finding calm in a chaotic world. <clears throat> and it reads, the United States is now the most anxious nation in the world. Congratulations to us. The land of the stars and stripes has become the country of stress and strife. This is a costly achievement. Stress-related ailments cost the nation $300 billion every year in medical bills and lost productivity, while our usage of sedative drugs keeps skyrocketing. Just between 1997 and 2004, Americans more than doubled their spending on anti-anxiety medication like Xanax and Valium from 900 million to 2.1 billion. The Journal of the American Medical Association cited a study that indicates an exponential increase in depression People of each generation in the 20th century were three times more likely to experience depression than people of the preceding generation. How can this be? Our cars are safer than ever. We regulate food and water and electricity. Though gangs still prowl our streets, most Americans do not live under the danger of imminent attack. Yet, if worry were an Olympic event, we'd win the gold medal. Citizens in other countries, ironically, enjoy more tranquility. They experience one-fifth the anxiety levels of Americans, despite having fewer of the basic life necessities. What's more, when these less anxious developing world citizens immigrate to the United States, they tend to get just as anxious as Americans. Something about our particular way of life, then, is making us less calm and composed. Our college kids are feeling it as well. In a study that involved more than 200,000 incoming freshmen, students reported all-time lows in overall mental health and emotional stability. As psychologist Robert Leahy points out, the average child today exhibits the same level of anxiety as the average psychi psychiatric patient in the 1950s. Kids have more toys, clothes, and opportunities than ever. But by the time they leave home, they are wrapped tighter than Egyptian mummies. We are tense. Why? What is the cause of our anxiety? Change, for one thing. Researchers speculate that the Western world's environment and social order have changed more in the last 30 years than they have in the previous 300. Think what has changed. Technology. The existence of the Internet increased warnings about global warming, nuclear war, and terrorist attacks. Changes and new threats are imported into our lives every few seconds thanks to smartphones, TVs, and computer screens. In our grandparents' generation, news of an earthquake in Nepal would reach around the world some days later. In our parents' day, the nightly news communicated the catastrophe. Now... In a matter of minutes, we have barely processed one crisis, and then we hear of another. In addition, we move faster than ever before. Our ancestors traveled as far as a horse or camel would take them during daylight, but us? We jet through time zones as if they were neighborhood streets. Our great-grandparents had to turn down the brain sensors when the sun set, but us? We turn on the cable news, open the laptop, or turn or tune into the latest survival show. For years, I kept a nightly appointment with the 10 o'clock news. Nothing like falling asleep with the accounts of murders and catastrophes fresh on the brain. And what about the onslaught of personal challenges? You or someone you know is facing foreclosure, fighting cancer, 
slugging through a divorce, or battling addiction. You or someone you know is bankrupt, broke, or going out of business. Without exception, we are getting older, and with age comes a covey of changes. My wife found an app that guesses a person's age by evaluating a picture of the person's face. It missed Denilin's, his wife's, age by 15 years to the younger side. She liked it. I missed mine by five years to the old side. I, so I retook it. It added seven more. Then, then, then ten. I quit before he pronounced me dead. One would think Christians would be exempt from worry. But we are not. We have been taught that a, the Christian life is a life of peace. And when we don't have peace, we assume the problem lies within us. Not only do we feel anxious, but we also feel guilty about our anxiety. The result is a downward spiral of worry, guilt, worry, guilt. It's enough to cause a person to get anxious. It's enough to make us wonder if the Apostle Paul was out of touch with reality when he wrote, Be anxious about nothing. Philippians 4, verse 6. Be anxious for less would have been a sufficient challenge. Or be anxious only on Thursdays. Or be anxious only in seasons of severe affliction. But Paul doesn't seem to offer any leeway here. Be anxious for nothing, not a silch, zero. Is that what he meant? Not exactly. He wrote the phrase in the present active tense, which implies an ongoing state. It's a life of perpetual anxiety that Paul wants to address. The Lucado Revised Translation reads... Don't let anything in life leave you perpetually breathless in, and in angst. The presence of anxiety is unavoidable, but the prison of anxiety is optional. Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing. The presence of anxiety is unavoidable. But the prison of anxiety is optional. We'll continue more of this tomorrow. But tonight I would like to invite you to ask the Lord to set you free from that prison if you are there. I'm sure there's plenty of reasons for us to feel anxious. But I also believe that we serve a God that can carry our burdens and that is eager to give us peace and fulfill His promise in our lives. So before we go to bed, let's pray and ask the Lord to deliver us from from those shackles, the prison of anxiety. Let's pray, Heavenly Father. Before we go to sleep, we want to bring our lives to you and our heavy hearts. We want to bring to you those burdens that we've been carrying on our shoulders. We need to be freed from the prison of anxiety, Father. As we hear of political turmoil, as we hear of racial turmoil, as our health is at risk in the midst of a pandemic, there's plenty of reasons to be anxious as we lose jobs, as we see people suffer, as, as we see people angry, Father. But help us, Lord, to enjoy the peace that surpasses any understanding. May we rest in Christ tonight. Help us to be anxious about nothing. Help us to trust you more and to depend more on you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a good night. God bless you.